Leave a like if you love Benji Fishy, and leave a comment down below letting me know which pro player you'd like me to break down next. Yo, what is going on, my guys? Today we are bringing you another video. This is not really a reaction video, though. We're going to be breaking down the most insane competitive gameplay I've ever seen in this game, dude. Benji Fishy is exploding in talent and skill right now. His game IQ and mechanics are absolutely through the roof, and it's, it's insane to watch. So today, I wanted to break down his last first cup solo cash cup run that was honestly just freaking mental i want to break down everything he did right what you guys can learn from it and just show you this spectacle that is benji fish i do think there's a lot of stuff that you can take away from his gameplay and incorporate into your game obviously benji fish is at another level when it comes to skill but there's always something you can take away to improve your own game and this is what i want to do in this video if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like i'll drop more pro player breakdowns if you guys enjoy content like this also make sure you guys go subscribe to my dude benji up there uh he's an absolute legend he somehow only has i know 424,000 is a lot but my man deserves at least a million subs in my opinion he is one of if not the best comp players competitive players in the game right now Coming all right, right, so first thing I want to do is just a basic 1v1 engagement during a tournament and how Benji deals with it. Obviously, he goes for a first little pop, and he sees that he got he has a player damage. So now he knows, all right, this guy's got white health. We're going to go for a challenge. Not too overconfident, but just calm and steady. And watch what he does here. <laughs> all right, so the very basic thing you could take away from this fight, and I know it's, it's just a pretty straight-up engagement, but the one thing that he does here really, really well is he's going for wall steals off the rip. Um, one thing you can do if you are a controller player, you can use the shoot wall technique. You'll notice he uses his pickaxe, but on controller, shooting walls out works just as good, if not actually better. Uh, for stealing walls just some for some reason how the controller mechanics work But what he does right here is again He's gonna get that damage that wall damage once you get it down uh, to right. 70 health You know that it's gonna be already always pickaxe like one shot with a pickaxe available to steal So he gets it down to 42 health. He's gonna go for that steal Boom, he just edits a door, he opens it, and what he does immediately, he sees the player that doesn't have a cone inside of his box. A number one reason why you should have a cone or a ramp inside of your box is that players like Benji Fish, he can't dumpster you like this. So what he does, he just goes for a really quick flip. He's going to go for an edit, reset it, grab it, and an absolute dumpster. He knows that he doesn't need to go for a headshot in that situation because he's already ripped him for shield he's here heard that shield crack so he knows that with his purple pump shotgun he's just got to line up that body shot clap all right so next i want to get into how benji terrorizes from height right now he senses okay now is the time to drive for height i've got good mats we've got a, just over 10 players left alive this is when he makes his push to try and establish high ground he only saw Basically, in that situation, two players above him, and he just goes absolute full W key momentum, and you can really take from this how to terrorize a, a game from height. Benji does a fantastic job in this one. Again, he's getting pushed by a couple guys who want to contest him for that height initially. He sees that zone is going to move, so he's going to make an early rotation in alongside this mountain and use the builds that are already in game to his advantage. And now he sees this ultimate height, and he can sense that he can now terrorize the entire match below him. So right now, again, he's dropping down, dropping down, but making sure to maintain, you know, like awareness of what's above him. You can see that really quick glance. And you'll what he'll try and do is stay one or two levels above any player below him. What this will allow him to do is get really good challenge distance so that he can get solid damage in, but yet easily respond to any attempt to take height. And again, as he sees the players dropping beneath him, he drops the follow. It's really crucial not to just stay on ultimate height and stay level. You gotta move with with the engagement that way you're not going to get dropped and take mad damage and you're also going to be able to get really punishing damage in it's not necessarily about protecting yourself from the that high fall damage but also about completely punishing any players beneath you so right now he can't get an angle so instead of just staying on that height he makes the decision to keep rotating in Again, he's going to get good height here and a great position. If you run out of the ability to get peaks, and now he ends up in a 1v1 situation because he's maintained that height. The zone has moved up the side of the hill. It's literally an easy cleanup for him right now in this game. You can see what he's doing right now. He's branching out with the pyramids and the floors, and he's opening them in positions that he thinks the, the player is going to move through. Player gets a little bit of, of an opening here. 
But he's Benji's been able to monitor him and see him this whole time. He gets the RPG reload off. And now it's just an easy cleanup to get that dub ski. Easy game, baby. Easy game. All right, so this this next example is just like an insanely good rotation from Benji. Uh, he incorporates again what we just talked about with box fighting into how to actually use that while moving cross map. So right here, he hears the snipe go off. He knows he's got a really great opportunity to secure a kill, but he needs to maintain awareness and not overcommit. So right now, he hears a guy behind him. He knows he has a millisecond to get that shot in, and that's exactly what he does. He gets that kill, and then immediately boxes around himself because he knows that pressure is coming. So now he's secured a load of mats. He knows he's, because he made that challenge, he knows he's got lots of materials. And he does this little, like, side push in. You'll notice that he uses ramps above his own head, either to one side or to block from behind. That allows him to move forward or move laterally to a player. While still staying protected the whole time. And keep in mind, if you're dropping just one ramp above your head, that's only 10 materials that you're using every time to protect yourself from that direction. So it actually can be a really, really efficient way to push into zone. And again, he does it right there. He's just moving a little bit to the, like, diagonally as he moves in. And he looks down and throws a ramp above his own head right there. Again, it's just big brain plays like this. It allows you to have more materials as you move into endgame. And right now, he's just looking and holding and, and listening for any type of opportunity. He even just fires an RPG right there because it looks like it's a really accessible lane for a player who might be rotating in late. He's got 14 players alive right now. He sits in a, in, a, in a bush, actually, to try and maintain awareness. Again, just giving himself a really good visual so he can look for peaks. Getting clips in on players, but you'll notice that he doesn't overcommit in any of these situations. One thing you got to do as a competitive player is not overcommit. Get the f*** out. Oh, my God. He's an animal, and here he comes alive, dude. So right there, he gets jammed up on a player, but he's W King like crazy, putting really good pressure in. And he's again, he's expanded his mat count now because he put that pressure on. And what an edit play right there, bro. Now that's a really risky play. It honestly would be tempting to just move into zone anyways. But he does get a little bit lucky there, cleaning up these kills. Again, knowing when to go for height is huge. You do not want to challenge it too early. And by waiting for the optimal situation, Benji locks down easy kills here and clutches this up, dude. Facts, shit. Benji. Facts, man. All right, so what I want to get into now for this example is what to actually do when you get pressured in a way, like you get taken off balance and you have to play defensive, because that's one thing Benji is incredibly good at. The two major takeaways from playing defensive will be to branch out as much as possible, and then once you get that opportunity, you got to commit to it. That's what Benji does really, really well in this opportunity. He sets himself as best as possible. What you should be trying to do is branching your builds out and then putting yourself in a position where you can get a solid right side peek and then just commit to the flip and try to get that kill on a player when you are on the downside, when you know they have more health than you and you're kind of on the back foot and you've, you've been challenged. So right now he gets challenged, doesn't see this player, takes a little bit of damage. Goes for a push. This is a solid player that he runs up on here. Just gonna box fight him. This player really wants his dong right now. He's going for the hard challenge. Goes in, but gets oh, tagged nice. big time. Takes two shotgun tags. Is down to 38 health, and now he's really on the back foot. So let's see how he responds here. Again, what he's doing right now, branching out, tunneling as fast as possible. It's always important to drill if you really want to improve a competitive Fortnite is working on your tunneling. He does actually end up with two players on top of each other, of, of, on top of, of him as well. So he wants to branch out and take as much heat as possible off of himself. Maybe pit these players against each other, but this one player is super committed to him because he knows that he has Benji lit. So right now, Benji looking for the peaks. Gets one solid right side tag in right there. Again, making that quick edit and then peeking from behind it. Again, right now, getting these really solid, quick little tags in, trying to even the fight as much as possible, but this player is 100% relentless. Again, because Benji is maxed out and branched out like this, it's allowed him for the best opportunity to get these tags in. And because of that, he's, he's loosened up the pressure on himself. Unfortunately, he gets tagged again and continues to get challenged because of that. Again, this player is solid that he's fighting right now, getting a lot of low ground tags in. No. And again, you'll see him to continue branching out right now. Seeing if he can sneak a mini. 
Knows the wall behind him is gone. But now he sets himself up for the right side peak. Right here, knows the player's there and commits to hitting the shot right there. Now again, the other player still knows that he's lit and continues the challenge. And Benji does die here, but he still makes the right play. He knows that he's, he's going to end up lit here. The player, again, has a health advantage. And he gets tagged, so he's now super back foot. So again, what does he do? He branches through his builds, trying to add a level of unpredictability to his movement so the other player doesn't know where he is. Trying to sneak some tags in here, trying to set him up as best as possible for a full commitment challenge here. He's got a green tag, so he knows that he can do solid damage. And he drops right behind the player. I believe that is a headshot, but unfortunately didn't register enough and the player was solid. But the takeaway from that situation is that even though he was totally on his back foot, that whole engagement, because he plays the engagement so well by branching out and looking for right side peaks, he was able to get points, sustain that battle, stay alive, you know, get more points on the board for himself. And who knows, if he had managed to get a cleaner headshot, that could have been a kill for him and he could have made it out, out of there completely alive. All right, so this is probably my favorite, like, three minutes from the tournament showing. This is insane, and it really just showcases Benji's big brain and how he can use it to rotate like an absolute animal right here. So we got 30 players left alive in this moving zone. That's huge. Again, we go back to that, that ramp above the head right here. Benji's using that, and he continues to use that through this rotation, so watch for that and how he uses it to position himself to get distance. Again, he's getting big challenged here right now. He's trying to just push across while also not becoming an obvious target. That's one thing. If you become too obvious and almost the front line of that push to zone, uh, you get kind of targeted by everybody when you do that. So he recognizes that that's beginning to happen and decides to drop down and allow somebody else to lead the push forward for him. Again, just going back to how huge Benji's brain is with this, man. I can't go in there. too risky. So right now... He's chilling, again, using that ramp to push right alongside of another player's box and doing so fully protected while also consuming minimal materials. Even still, he's down to just six walls. And he's looking for peaks. He knows he's low on mats. And he's looking for that opportunity. He does have five fish right now, so he's actually going to opt to go out in the zone right now. That's one major thing. This video, this clip will also demonstrate how insane and effective the fish are to use for your rotations. Because before, there was no method to really chill in zone in late game when the zone is hitting for 10 damage ticks. But when it's hitting, you know, for 10 and you can heal in one second for 50, that allows a lot more opportunity while using the fish and how you rotate. So right now, he still doesn't have a whole lot of mats. He's looking for opportunities, trying to use the corn to his advantage right now. Knows he's in big trouble. Knows he's got no mats. So what does he do? He goes back out in the zone, eats the fish, and then grabs as many mats as possible. And now he's in so much better of an opportunity to clinch this dub. Again, it's really important not to panic. You lose, you, you, you reduce your panic by practicing these end games more, by practicing your, your, your tunneling, your editing, and it makes you a lot calmer while pushing through situations like this. Benji's also on high sensitivity, so that's why you see a little bit more of a screen shake and a little bit more flickiness. But don't confuse that with nerves. Benji is just that goaded. And he uses a very, very high sense. I often say that high sense can introduce a lot of inconsistencies. Benji is definitely the exception to that rule. Because he is mad clean with it, dude. Like, look at these plays, man. Again, he's looking at final 1v1 situation. He's dominated the rotation. Ended up with a lot more materials in a lot better of a situation. And he can afford to pluck away at these player, this player. He's just dropping down. Getting little tags in. Getting really bold with that peak. I don't think he's hit for more than 30 no! damage this whole Let's engagement, man. Go! But again, even though he didn't hit for high damage peaks, he won that with rotations. And that's what's so amazing to watch about Benji. His in-game IQ is just on another level. And then you combine that with his insane tunneling mechanical abilities, man. Dude, it's, there's so much you can learn from watching Benji Fishy. It's absurd. It's absurd. Just so you know, Benji actually won. All this gameplay is from the Solo Cash Cup, the Europe 
the Europe Solo Cash Cup, and he won it. It was a $7,000 prize. Let's go! He's let's insane, go! man. He's absolutely insane. Yes, 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 he did it. Yes, let's go! You love to let's see go. it, dude. Let's go! If you enjoyed the video today, make sure you go to sub to Benji Fishy. Also, subscribe here if you want more pro player breakdowns. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy videos like this. And drop a like on the video. Greatly helps me out. I appreciate you very much. And I'll catch you in the next one.